How's it going everyone? Uh, this is my video to show you guys how to winterize and put away your fig tree and banana tree for the winter. As you can see, lots of the leaves are fallen. It's November the 3rd and it's getting to about 2 degrees Celsius, 1 degree Celsius. That's generally the time that you want to bury your fig tree. Um, if that's not enough of an indicator, the yellow leaves will tell you. So basically, they're pretty much falling off. This one actually has some figs still. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and either bury them or throw them out. You, you could do either one, it doesn't make a difference. They're not really gonna do any harm to the plant. But uh, so you, you wanna get rid of all the leaves as well. Just to clear out all the, all the garbage pretty much. You want as little in the hole as you can get. And I'm actually gonna try and separate the banana tree and make a different trench. Um, I really don't want to grow them together or put them together in the soil because let's say this one gets kind of rot. Um, I don't want it to harm the fig tree because I've had it for about seven to eight years and I've done this method for the fig tree for about seven to eight years so it's been successful. Like the reason you, I actually do it is if you see here, you have a lot of green tips here on the tree. That means it's the that means the branch is still doing really well and it's alive. You can not bury the tree but what happens is pretty much all of these branches are just going to die because fig trees they give fruit after the second year you're not really going to get any fruit if you do that method so i bury it so i can keep getting fruit and every year and as you can see all these branches will all of them will survive so you're going to get a lot a lot of fruit if you see still here a couple of little ones hanging on this one is a drop of honey fake very sweet but they ripen very late which is why these ones didn't really make it this year it wasn't hot enough this one here is the it's called the saint george fig and this one is not quite as sweet it's got like a purplish color when it ripens it's still really good though it's a really good variety and it comes i would say about september it ripens and that's in canadian climate so if you have a more a more moderate climate you'll probably have a better shot but um i have to bury it so that's that's pretty much that. Um, what I'm going to do with the banana trees, I'm going to go and dig around here. See, this is a hardy variety actually. I'm surprised how well it's doing. And I got a bunch of forks here. These forks are actually to keep away squirrels and raccoons so they don't dig towards the roots. Because this has got one of the sweetest, uh, one of the sweetest uh, rhizome you could find in a plant. All right, so I'm just gonna get rid of these. There we go. In case you're wondering, um, this that's around here, a really good fertilizer. It's uh, ground coffee. So if you have like a coffee machine and you have extra coffee or if you know somebody who owns a restaurant or an espresso shop, it's really good fertilizer and it's slow release. So there we go. All right, that's that. One more here. Okay, that should be all the one more. Here. Yeah, you got really lodged them in there. I put them early in the season so the plant basically grew into them. Yeah, I'm gonna actually have to use a, a shovel for these ones. It actually grew right underneath the root, which is kind of funny. There we go. So these ones, I'm gonna throw out. They're pretty useless. So here. These ones I'm gonna save for next year. In case you're wondering, this is really good for basically any plant where you have problem with squirrels or animals that are digging at it. They really don't like the poking of the of the plastic forks. Very cheap option to uh, to control them. All right, so. Uh, let's see, you're going to need quite a few things here. Uh, a lot of them you might have around the house. So what I generally use is plywood. Plywood is to cover the trench. That's going to give an insulating property. And you're going to basically use that over here. This comes and gets tipped over to this side into a giant trench. That's going to be your cover. You got, uh, you got some uh, two by fours, one by one by fours, any kind of wood that you have that you can cross wedge underneath the plywood, that's gonna give you a little bit of strength and stability to hold up the, the plywood, the soil, and any snow that's gonna fall. Um, 
I got these large 1x12s. These are actually going to be for the banana tree. I'm going to make a separate trench and I'm going to cover it as well. Um, you'll need a, as well, obviously a shovel, which I have in my hand. This is the most important tool for this. Pretty much you're going to be doing about an hour's worth of digging and uh, you really don't need anything else. If you have a, kind of a machine or some kind of tractor, that's even better. Uh, you're going to need some plastic. Any drop sheet will do. Typically, um, I use like uh, painters plastic, so like drop sheets. You can find it at any local hardware store, paint store. Uh, that that goes on top of the plywood afterwards, and that gives it like a it's like a vapor barrier that retains the moisture inside, inside of your trench, and it keeps it warm as well. Kind of like this, along with that in the soil, is going to be a great insulator. I got some burlap here. This is going to be for the banana tree. I'm going to wrap the roots just to put it to the side. I also have an extra fig tree. So this fig tree, I actually cut from a root from this one. So if you ever want an extra fig tree, typically you would do this in the springtime, but I don't know if you see any here. If you find any branch that starts growing right here through the soil, like a new growth, it'll typically grow its own roots. So you can kind of just chop it off and you're gonna get a fresh new tree. So that way it's, it's, it's the easiest way to propagate and pretty much within three weeks it, it starts uh, sprouting. So okay, I've pretty much explained what I'm going to do here. Um, I'm probably just going to skip ahead. I'm going to take away the banana tree and uh, the fig tree. going to clean up all the leaves and then the digging begins. Also something else you, you'll probably need if you want to get if you want to get new growth as well, there's another way to do it. Um, here, I'm just going to put this away. If you cut any of the tips, you see this one here? It's got multiple nodes. So this is where the leaves were. So you see these little nodes? Like if you wanted to grow a new tree, you would cut this pretty much right here. And I think I'm actually going to do that. All right, there's one. All right, so lots of nodes. It's going to be really easy to grow. I actually have another video explaining how to grow these with rooting hormone and uh, and basically you know you can get as many trees as you want out of this because these have typically a lifespan of about 15 years after that I'm not quite sure how much fruit you get out of them this one's about 10 years old though so um, I got one there so this is the drop of honey I'm gonna separate those uh, as you can see it's really thick already maybe this one is a little smaller, but it should do as, as well. Just remember, um, you can cut the tips. The tips is usually the part that gives you the best uh, chance. Um, the plant's not really going to suffer because where you get the fruit is generally all the, the woody part, the brown part. I'm going to go ahead and take one from here as well. Since the tree's kind of already growing a little bit higher than I wanted to, I'm going to cut it down here. I'm going to have to split this one in half. Just cut the bottom part flat and the top part on an angle so you remember afterwards. This one is actually two different twigs. They're off the leaves, you don't need those, they're useless. So I'm going to put that there, face it in the right direction. And then I got this one. Uh, this one I'm just going to cut it into pieces. Uh, yeah, it's just really growing through the, through the mesh and I really don't want that. So this is going to be garbage. Alright, so I got two cuttings, three cuttings here. One doesn't have the top. The other ones, you can see that they're a little more likely to grow. And that's the two different varieties. Um, in case you're wondering, I have this cage here. It's to keep out the, uh, the rodents, raccoons, squirrels. Skunks. Skunks typically aren't a problem because they can't reach the fruit. Um, it actually serves a purpose as well of kind of stunting the growth of the plant. Um, some of the twigs will get through, but you can kind of just cut those back. Or you can just feed them back in, and then when you bury it, you bury them, you fold them out. So this one should be fine. Right there. Just pull them back down. 
roots can stay on top. And that's pretty much it. Now, time for cleanup, and I'm gonna start digging, and I'm gonna skip through to when I'm ready to dig. And then you'll get an idea of what I'm, the general area that I need to dig out, what size hole you need, and uh, that's pretty much it for now. I'm gonna start digging this guy out. Um, just feel around the, the roots until you, you, see I felt some roots there already. It's actually pretty, pretty wide it's gonna be. A little wider a little bit. Just give it some wedging. Don't get too close to the roots. All right. It's a little soft there. Let's try to get under it. Loosen it a little bit. You want to keep as much as the original soil as possible. And it's actually quite a big root ball. There you go. That loosens it up. Okay, now I'm going to just loosen the soil very gently. Okay, I want to keep this together. This is what's going to keep it alive. Gentle with the leaves. I'm gonna get some burlap. This is just to hold it together. Um, I might actually just put it right in the soil afterwards. I actually have a utility knife. That's useful. This wall much easier. So now, let's deal with the fig tree. Um, I'm gonna do the same thing basically with this that I did with, with that guy there. So I don't really need to show you that. It's more or less the same way I did that. Easy to loosen the soil from a planter. Just smack it on the outside. And you can pretty much pull it up. Pretty easy. Just this one, you don't need to wrap it. The roots are pretty, uh, pretty thin, and it holds this all together really well. Just make sure it's dried out. So okay, leaves are cleaned up. Now what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna build a trench. Pretty much, you measure it out more or less to the top of the the top highest uh, twig, and then more or less than here. Some people actually do a very narrow trench, something like this, and they'll actually tie. They'll tie the twigs together with string. You could do that as well. I like to leave it a little bit wider so it can breathe. And it puts a little bit less stress on the plant and it allows it to breathe better. And it also create a larger uh, air pocket. So much more moisture, more heat. Uh, and the twigs, the reason they survive is because of the heat and the soil allows the plant to actually breathe. So the roots, the key to the roots is basically loosening up, loosening up everything around it once you have the trench and then you're gonna you're gonna wedge it lift it up basically lie it down sideways and then the roots will be covered as well with uh with plastic so this is about maybe an hour usually it takes me so i'm gonna do the digging and i'll save you the the hassle having to watch that all right i'll be back 
All right, here we are uh, about 45 minutes later. As you can see the pile, that's pretty much how much soil I've gotten out of there. Um, you're basically digging just more or less the size of the plywood. You can go a little wider. Um, I actually have some rocks here so I can support the uh, wood width. Um, so, okay, I've gotten to this point. So if you see here, I've actually dug right up to about, I would say about a foot from the, the center of the root ball. And uh, what we have to do here now is loosen around and you see how I have the shovel lines here? You're going to basically be going like this. Don't worry about the roots. They're very resilient. It'll do just fine. You go around in a circle, more or less like I did here. So there, and then you're just going to basically put the shovel there, like that. And you're going to leverage a little bit. You see how the root is moving? That's what you want to do. So the next step, if you do that for both, you take about a foot away from each uh, root ball. And now you're going to have to loosen it up enough that you can actually pull it down, okay? But also to do that, you're gonna have to dig, I would recommend after wedging it around, you're gonna dig underneath it. So you're gonna get, you're gonna dig, uh, dig basically a hole underneath both root balls. So it gives you an extra space because the root ball is really big and you wanna get it a little further down so it's not poking out so much from the soil, okay? So I'm gonna just show you the beginning of it. You're just gonna be doing a lot of this. Just right underneath. It's got lots of roots, it won't die. So, all right. So you see, you get to this point, pretty much right underneath it. I want you to dig like that. You see the roots there? As long as you don't take out too many of them, it'll be fine. I'm gonna build a hole here. I'm gonna drop one tree at a time. This little hole. Remember, it is pretty heavy with the root ball, so you want to clean out around as much as possible and even wedge on, the, on these sides too, like I did already. Okay, see, basically, I'm making another hole in which it's going to sit for about five to six months. This will actually also help you loosen it up. Right. Now just have a have a tug and see how it feels. In case you're wondering, I dug more or less. You see there, the height of a shovel, the height of the actual spade is more than enough for you because you don't really need to get it really deep. You just need enough so you have enough room to put it in. All right, so. I can almost pretty much tip it over. See how I've loosened it around here? Shovel, wedge, shovel, wedge. You can use a bar too if you like. The shovel's much easier. So you just pull on that. Okay, there you go. That's pretty hard. The hole's over there. Okay. So that's one tree. Um, see over there? I want you to get a closer look here. So. I've loosened it here, much easier. Now I can use the shovel as a wedge, like that, right? Or I can just pull it, much easier. Straight pull, or uh, I'm actually gonna twist it because I don't wanna break these branches. So here's what we're gonna do. Just loosen it up. Okay. Make sure, make sure you do it in a way that you get good leverage. Like I just one of these. <laughs> it is heavy though, don't hurt yourself. I'm gonna wedge it back into the hole a little bit. Sorry, it's a little tricky. You just gotta go by feel this. a lot easier. I'm just going to pull it up. The whole tree. You kind of got to go by feel. So here's what we're going to do. Pull out the whole tree. There you go. 
basically make the hole bigger. So all the way here. Plenty of roots here. It'll attach right back into the soil. The key is to not to have the root too high. You see this height here? You want it more or less that height. If not, a little bit bigger. A little bit higher is fine. So. That's probably some roots from there, but it's all fine. We got lots here. Remember, you can twist it any way you want. Whatever way fits in the hole the best, it's up to you. Okay. Let's see how that works. Okay. Back to the hole. It's much better. It's pretty much what I want. Put it in a way that you can bend it. Bend it the best way. You don't want to bend it too much. That's about right. Afterwards, with the pressure of the plywood, it'll more than handle it. See, even if you have to twist a couple, that's why you got to go one shovel length deep, so you can at least, they're fairly flexible. You could twist them a little bit, and it should be fine. Okay, so basically gonna do that for the other one as well. I'm gonna get them to overlap, and I'm gonna skip over to the point where uh, that one's pretty much ready to, to go over as well. All right, back to work. Okay guys, so I got to this point. Both of the trees are down. Just a little note. If you ever want to uh, get them completely, let's say you're too far in the hole, just lift it up, add a little bit of soil underneath, like lift it up with a shovel, scoop some soil underneath, it'll help wedge it back up. So basically this is all you need. It's flexible enough that I can put the plywood on top and cover it, okay? So first of all, before anything, I want you to cover up um, the root fall. So scoop the soil that you dug out, okay? And a little bit more. So it should basically be flat. That'll hold it in place and it'll keep it uh, from drying out the roots. As you can see, I kind of dug a little too big, but better big than, uh, than not big enough. All that you took out pretty close by so you don't have to toss it for long distance. My routine is actually a little bit more tricky because of the cage. It's harder to get in behind it but if you want without a cage it'll be a lot easier because you can kind of get in behind and you can leverage a little bit better. So basically, you're almost going to be flat with the terrain out around it. This way the roots don't dry out and they can gather nutrients from the soil. prefer their own their existing soil the nutrients that they need are already in there and they don't get shocked almost done just a couple for 
from here. Don't mind my sniffles. Try not to have too much root exposed. And don't you don't have to do too much because it's gonna give you more work when you take them out. Alright, so here I'm just gonna stamp down the maybe a little bit more soil here. Should be good enough. Alright, for the fun part. So, just gonna get some wood. Just feel it out, see how much you need. So, it's a little too small. I'm gonna throw that over here. Let's see. Let's try some bigger ones. This is going to have to hold the weight for the snow and the soil. So it comes out a little bit, but I'll solve that problem. It's coming handy. Remember, this is where most of the weight's gonna be. Actually, before I forget, got this one here. Gonna go in here too. Uh, maybe over here. That'll be a new tree next year. Should be more than good enough to be able to walk on it when you're done. This doesn't have to be perfect. Get the branches underneath. It's ideal to cover more of this side. It's gonna sink a little bit, so just be aware of that. Okay, let's fix this one here. Uh, got nails open up, let me turn that around. Okay. So, should be able to 
lower your weight. It shouldn't be too bad. Okay, so now we get plastic. Just measure it out. I'm gonna double it up if I have to. Go as far as you have, like all the way to the end, even past the edge of the root. And you know what? We need the whole thing. Let's get this out of here. You have to open up the whole thing. Yep. I have a couple extra rocks that's going to hold the plastic in place while I dump the soil. as much soil as possible, even if it's not covered by the plywood. It's going to sink anyways once you put soil on top of it. So. This is just the, this is the vapor barrier, barrier basically. More stones. You can use bricks. That works too. It's gonna sink this way, and you're probably gonna get like a pile like this. See, there's a twig there. I should find the plastic will protect it. Once this goes down, you see, only a couple of twigs that are gonna be forced down, but they're still gonna be inside the plastic, and there's still gonna be an air pocket to keep it warm. If you want to, um, if you don't want it to come loose, you can screw into the wood, put a couple of screws. That'll work. Um, you don't have to, though. With the weight of this, all usually doesn't move. Okay. Go over to this side. If you got wood poking out like that, it doesn't matter. And now, this is the easy part. Just dump soil. Make sure you cover the, the area around the roots well. Start there. And just toss the soil. If the corner rips, don't worry about it. It probably will rip, but the plastic will stay intact. The foam will keep the moisture in. The plastic will keep humidity levels high and acts as, as an insulator as well. But the soil is a great insulator. It'll snow on top as well after. That's a great insulator. You can use leaves for the garden. Also a good insulator. Um, I don't use leaves because in the springtime, it's really mucky and it's gonna, it smells and it kind of rots a little bit. So, I mean, it's not necessary. So I'm, I'm probably just gonna skip forward to the part where it's covered. I'll walk on top after and you'll see what the finished product is. Been doing this for seven years, so it's worked every time then, since then. Okay, time to, time to cover. Okay, everyone, uh, so this is pretty much the finished product. As you can see, you don't really see any plastic. Um, you know, I can still walk on it. Uh, I know where it is still fairly sturdy. The only thing that's going to be on top afterwards is snow, but snow is pretty light. Axe is a good insulator. Just make sure you cover it everything evenly, like that much soil pretty much is okay. Um, if it collapses, it, it won't collapse 100%. It, you'll still have the plastic protecting it and it should still survive no matter what. I have times in the spring where I see it, all the plastic is ripped, but that's not a big issue because by then it's not as cold. You're just, you're doing this basically to protect from the in the long winter um, it's pretty much foolproof uh, I've seen other methods but to me honestly this is the one that works the best and um, it's a little bit more work make sure you stay hydrated while you're doing it a lot of digging um, but it's worth the it's worth the result afterwards um, I'm actually not finished so I got my banana tree here and as you can see uh, these are the boards I got for them these are one by 12 by 8 feet so this is about 
I'm uh, about six feet, about six, oh, six four, six five. With the length of the leaf is about over. Um, some of these leaves I'm going to cut off because they look kind of thick, so I don't want it to get uh, rot inside the hole. Um, basically, this is a good way to measure how much of a how much of a trench you need. I don't need the full board, so what I'll do is I'll leave a little bit so this can sit on the soil. So for the extra support, I got some um, two by twos there. Um, those will help as well. Those will, I'll cross three of them in the center just to support the weight of the soil. And, uh, basically, you know what? This is a good way to measure. I'm gonna do it actually. Oh, there. Well, you know, if you want, just mark it out. Right. More or less. It doesn't have to be perfect. More or less the trench I'm going to build. This is it's not exact science, but you got the gist, the gist of it. Uh, to make sure I got enough space. You know what, I'll, I'll move it over a little bit. I don't want to overlap my other one. I don't want to get too close to that tree because there's a lot of roots. So let's do that, or maybe even that. Okay, so that's pretty much what I'm going to do with that. Um, I got some coffee ground. This is the ideal. Slow release, natural, lots of nitrogen. Very good for the for slow release for bananas especially. Okay, I'm going to throw that into the burlap when I bury it. See if it can, maybe even outside of the burlap, see if it can release gradually over the winter. My hope is that the leaves survive because that's what's going to have the plants continue and give me fruit because they take about 22 months to get fruit. So, worst, worst scenario, if the leaves die, I have the rhizome still. Those typically survive in the soil or in a warm environment, and uh, I'll get a plant from scratch. But for now, uh, I'm gonna dig the hole and then uh, we'll finish it off. Pretty much the same method. I've actually never tried this before with the banana plant. It's very exotic and tropical for this kind of climate. So if it gives, it gives. If not, at the same time, I'm not really damaging the fig tree. I have separate trenches, so hopefully they don't they don't interact because I don't want any rot going from that one to that to that tree. Okay, so. Um, I'm gonna start digging and uh, see you back in a few minutes. This shouldn't take as long. Thanks. Okay, so got this trench dug. Uh, I had a plastic, it was 10 by 25 approximately, so I just folded it, doubled it over. Um, I pretty much made the, the size of the, the trench just slightly longer than the, the boards because I just realized I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to salvage these leaves here. I'm gonna cut the lower ones. Um, let me see. This one's already kind of. Uh, no, I'm just gonna save these many. Uh, and that should be good enough. I don't want to. I don't want too much. I just want enough that to mimic. Uh, well, not to mimic. To basically still pretend like it's gonna grow. Still these here. Uh, these ones look fairly healthy. Uh, nice and green. This one might. This one might be a little not so much, but um, these are okay. I'm gonna get some. Uh, here we go. So I'm gonna get some coffee ground. I'm just gonna put it around the roots. I, I'm I'm leaving this loosely, uh, loosely uh, tied. It's not even tied at all. It's just to hold the hold the soil basically together. Um, here we go. So I'm gonna put. The, the base here, right? And I'm gonna tip it over, but I'm gonna put some burlap on the side. I really don't want it's touching the soil now, but I really don't want it touching any soil. That's usually how plants start rotting. So I'm gonna do this. Just make a little, it's a little pocket for it, and then I'll wrap it afterwards. Okay, so. as tight together as possible. Okay, now these ones are gonna fold. I'm putting a little bit of strain on them. They're pretty resilient. Just rip a little bit there. Okay, so cover these ones. So I want it to have like a 
little bit of protection from the soil. And I'm gonna give it some plastic that I'm gonna wrap downwards so I can kind of kind of keep some of the moisture towards the leaves because the the plant will breathe naturally through, throughout here. Um, so I'm gonna do this. First I'm gonna cover the roots. I have the cloth there just it's easier afterwards to take it out. That'll keep it warm a little bit. Hopefully the fertilizer keeps it going. Slow release. You can use the uh, uh, ash as well if you have like a barbecue or fireplace. Works really well too. Okay, I'm not gonna go any further than that. That's just to keep it warm. All right. Okay. Now I'm gonna get the board there. Just be careful not to step on it. I got, I got these three here. I'm gonna make use of them as well. So we'll just shove them in there. This is just to support the weight. Not sure how strong that's gonna be, but. Sounds good. Okay. Not gonna be too straight, but again, this doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. Shouldn't be too bad. Get on here. Again, this is the first time I've tried this with a banana plant. No guarantees. Hopefully it will work. <laughs> okay, that one's broken. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to get some more sticks. Uh, okay, you know what, I'll use a couple of these. That's the inherent problem. Try that again. I don't have any rocks for this one, but I'm gonna try just tuck it in a little bit here. Actually, you know what? Maybe a little bit less. I just don't want any soil getting towards the leaves. So maybe I'll just cover the outside instead. Alright, so now, much like the other one, Cover. Cover with soil. Hopefully the balance of the weight will, will cause it not to break. I'm not putting as much soil on top as the other one. If you're ever in doubt, use uh, maybe two wet fours. It's a little safer. With these ones too, I could have also put a, a long two by four in the middle to support the weight. We'll see how this does. So 
so it will fall in, but hopefully not too much. So yeah, basically I can't walk up this one. Typically, banana plants, they require sunlight, indirect sunlight. This one is not going to have any sunlight, but it will have moisture, a little bit of slow-release fertilizer, and hopefully it can get by with just that. If it drops the leaves, then I can grow a new banana tree next year from just from the bulb. Okay, so just even it out. Make sure you got enough on the side. With the other side. It's a lot of work, but if you enjoy it, it's worth it. Not gonna bore you guys too much, but uh, I'm just gonna finish this off. Feel free anytime to rewind or fast forward to the video. Make sure you get enough over there. I'm not as optimistic about this one, but if it gives, it gives. So basically, I don't have to show you guys the rest. Basically doing what, what I did there. I'm going to cover off the rest now. Hopefully this was helpful to you guys. Sorry if I'm taking deep breaths. This is a lot of work. Um, if you have any comments, suggestions, questions, uh, just please leave them in the comment section. If you have any questions about uh, how to grow fig trees from cuttings which I left there I have a separate video for that so thanks for sharing the time guys have a good one